Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Cheryl. Thank you very much for joining me. If you're new here, hello, welcome. And if you're returning here, welcome back. Hi. I do realize that I've had some new subscribers, so hi. And I hope you enjoy this video. We're going to try record. I mean, I don't know why I said we. I'm going to try recording this again on my webcam. I did record this whole video on my camera, on my phone, but it didn't work. And, I mean, if you've been watching my videos, you know that my webcam doesn't work sometimes either. So, we're just going to try. So, um, this is a bookish video. I am doing, well, oh, my voice. I, I just recorded it at all, so my voice is kind of croaky. I have a cafe mocha in this, my weekend is all booked um, mug. I got this on Amazon, I think. Okay. Oof. So, as you can tell from the title of this uh, video, I'm so out of it now. Okay, here we go. So, this is a bookish tag. This is the book recommendations tag by St uh, Steph Borrow, I think her name is. Borrow, Bro, I don't remember how to pronounce her name. I'm sorry. She created it. I will link her channel below. She's great. I do watch her. I just forget how to pronounce her last name. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she created this tag, and I thought, hey, why not do it? So, first of all, I just wanted to apologize for not doing a video in the last month or so. And the reason being, I am suffering from depression. I uh, I do have clinical depression. I've had it for many years, probably about, well, almost exactly 30 years. And um, every about every year or two, I go through a few months where I just... I'm really depressed and nothing helps and so I went through that it only lasted about a month and a half this time so yay um, you don't really get over clinical depression but I'm getting through it and I'm a lot happier I can smile now so I thought I'd do a video okay so this is the book recommendations take again this is not a crafty video this is a bookish video so if you want to watch crafty content i will have one up soon i promise i've done a lot of knitting and crocheting i just haven't done any videos lately but i will be doing one soon i mean almost positive <laughs> okay so i have my little um uh, notebook here with the questions and i will put the questions down in the description box below um, if you want to do this take, and let me know if you do do the take in the in the comments, and I will watch it. Um, okay, grab a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, anything you want to drink or eat, and if you want, you can grab a craft to do. So here we go. Question number one: A book that you tell people is your favorite, and for that, it is. And if you know my channel, you know the answer. It is Anne of Green Gables. Nope, that's the wrong one. I saw the green and I thought it was the right one. Nope. This is Anne of Green Gables by Lucy Ma Montgomery or L.M. Montgomery. And um, I love this book. It is my favorite all-time book. I will never say anything else. I mean, I do love a lot of books, but this is my all-time favorite. I do have the whole series and I did have them in the right order, but I don't have them now. Um, let's see. Oh, the numbers are on them. That's handy. The numbers are on them. So, this is number two. Um, Anne of the Anne of Avonlea. Number three is Anne of the Island. These are just cheap books, but I love the pictures. I love them. Four. Where's four? Four is Anne of Windy Poplars, otherwise known as, um, I forget what the other name is. There's another name for this, but that one and five <clears throat> Anne's House of Dreams. I think this one is probably my favorite other than the first book. I just love this book and I love that cover. Isn't that gorgeous? And Rainbow Valley. This is about Anne's kids. And Anne of, no, that's six. Did I do this one? Anne of Ingleside and then Rainbow Valley. Sorry. And then there is Rilla of Ingleside as well. But, um, is it Rilla of Ingleside? Yes. But uh, I can't find it. I don't know where it is. So, um, yeah. That is my favorite series. My favorite movie of all time, if you need to know, is uh, Anne of Green Gables with Megan Follows in it. Um, I love that movie. 
Megan Follows is always Anne to me. Whenever I read a book with Anne, it always, I hear Megan's voice. I see Megan. It is Megan Follows. Anyways, <laughs> I am doing a whole video on Ella Montgomery. I'm reading a lot of her books, so look forward to that in the next few months. Um, and uh, I'll be rereading the Anna Green Gables series. I think I've read all of them except for two. The last two I haven't read. Rill of Ingleside and Rainbow. No, I've read Rainbow Valley. I think it's just the last one I've read, but I'm going to reread all of them. going to read some more Ella Montgomery. So if you don't know what Anna Green Gables is about, sorry, I should have said that in the beginning. Where's Anna Green Gables? Here it is. It is about, sorry for the wrinkly shirt. It is about a little orphan girl named Anne who has red hair and hates her red hair. And uh, she goes to live in PEI with a um, brother and sister, Marilla and Matthew. And Marilla and Matthew want to adopt a little boy, but instead they get Anne by mistake. And then Anne grows on them, and they end up loving each other as family. And Anne, um, it's all about Anne's life and the mischief she gets into. And the writing is beautiful. The descriptions of PEI Island. I really want to... PEI Island. PEI... Prince Edward Island. Now, I was trying to think of what it's called. Prince Edward Island. I really want to go there. My friend Ryan went to PEI... Um, a few years ago and saw the Anne house and I really want to go there. I do live in Canada, but it's quite a ways away from you guys. So I do want to go there someday, but, um, yeah, I love that book. Okay. Question number two. Where did I put my notebook? Ah, where did my notebook go? Where did my notebook? Oh, there it is. Okay. Next we have number two, a book that is your guilty pleasure for that. I don't really believe in guilty pleasure books. I think you read what you enjoy. Um, I think if I was to say a guilty pleasure book would be a romance book with a bit of smut in it, just because I don't enjoy reading books with smut in it. So, um, once in a while I enjoy it, but because I am a Christian, I don't enjoy reading smutty scenes. But there is one author I enjoy reading, and I've only read one of her books, but I do want to read more, and that is Tessa Dare. Um, I read a book, I'll put the picture up here, I forget what it's called. But I really enjoyed it. It does have quite a bit of smut in it. I mean, for me, it's a lot. For most people, maybe not. But for me, it's a lot. And I did enjoy it. So I think that would be my guilty pleasure is Tessa Dare books. But I don't read a lot of romance. I mean, I've read books with a bit of smut in as as a like as part of the book, but it's not the forefront. Um, so I think that would be my guilty pleasure if I have one. Number three. And my computer just went off. Okay, my computer went off, but I think it's safe, so we're all fine. Okay, the number three, a book everyone loved, but you didn't. For that, and don't come after me. Please don't come after me. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I know, I know, it's a really popular book. I didn't enjoy it. I thought what Evelyn did to get up in the world is just horrific, and... I mean, people say she did what she had to do, but I don't believe she had to do all that. I don't think you have to be Hollywood star. <laughs> so, um, I just, I didn't enjoy that book at all. I didn't like Evelyn's character. I didn't like any of the characters. I DNF'd it after about 75%. I just didn't enjoy it. I thought it was boring. I, it, I, I couldn't enjoy Evelyn. I know she's a character that... You don't necessarily like in the beginning, but I just didn't like her. I just, I couldn't read her. I'm sorry. I just didn't like it. So, um, number four, a book you read the fastest. For that, I listened to some audiobooks. I listened to three of them on Libby, and then the other two are on Scribd. So I'm going to listen to the other two. Um, I'm going to start one today. And... They are by Victoria Abbott. This is a cozy mystery series. It's the Book Collector Mysteries. Here are two of them. I don't know what order they're in. I read them out of order. I apologize. Um, that's, uh, that's all. The Sayers Swindle and the Wolf window Widow. Um, this is by Victoria Abbott. I love these covers. This is a cozy mystery series, and it stars uh, Jordan who comes from a family of uncles. She lives with her uncles. or live. She was raised by her uncles. And they are not in the up and up. They're kind of criminals. 
and um, she decides to go straight. She's the first one in her family to go straight and not be a criminal. So she gets a job with, in the first book, The Christie Curse, the first book. I'll put the picture up here. And she goes and becomes a book she a book researcher, book collector for this famous woman that nobody likes in the small town. She's not famous. She's just, she's rich. <laughs> she's very wealthy. And so she collects books, like first editions and stuff. And Jordan goes to help her find these books and bring her these books. Well, in the meanwhile, she solves murders. And I love this series. I love the characters. One of her uncles is my favorite character of all, his Uncle Kev. I love him. He's so funny and so just oblivious. And he's just hilarious. The characters are great. The narrator on the audiobooks does an excellent job. I can't remember her name. I'm sorry. But she is wonderful. And, um, oh, and it is itchy. And I just love these books. They are based on... Um, different classic novelists like this one's Dorothy L. Sayer, this one's Virginia Woolf, there's Agatha Christie, um, there's Marsh, I forget his name, and then the um, that one's called The Marsh Madness, and there's one more book. Um, I can't remember what that book is called, but there's five in total. Really enjoy this series. I love it, and um, what was the question? <laughs> A book you read the fastest. Oh, yeah, I read these so fast because I could not put them down. They are hilarious and so good and really enjoyed them. So I recommend them. Number five, a book that deserves more hype. For that, I have a graphic novel. And I don't read a lot of graphic novels. But this is Everything is Okay by Debbie Tung. I bought this copy after I got it from the library and read it. And I cried through the whole book. This is a book about depression and dealing with chronic depression. As I said at the beginning of this video, I do suffer from chronic or clinical depression, whatever you want to call it. And reading this book put me in a dark place in the beginning because it was describing everything I go through that I know in my head. In my head, I know it's caused by depression. But I was feeling like I'm the only one who deals with it, that that these were unique to my depression. And when I read this, I noticed that everything she talked about is something that she also goes through and a lot of people with depression goes through. And I was like, oh my goodness, I'm not the only one, which technically I knew, but it just felt so good to see that. The pictures are illustrated by Debbie Tung. It is a nonfiction biographical book. All of her Graphic novels are that way. I've read all of them, and this one just hit me. I mean, all of them are beautiful. I love all of them. Debbie Tung is an is a underhyped author, as far as I can tell. She is just so good. Her books are wonderful. And this book deals with her getting diagnosed with depression, her going through it, and how she came out the other end, and how you don't really get over depression. You just get through it. And um, I really... I had to buy this book because it was just, it was amazing. And I've reread it twice. I've read it twice now already. And I want to reread it again. It is so good. And I recommend Debbie Tung. She does have three other books, I believe. And um, I've read them all and I love them all. And I want to collect them all. Okay. Next question. Question number six. A book that is becoming a movie or TV show. For that one, I don't know what movie and TV shows are coming out. But one that has come out as a movie last year, I believe, that I still haven't seen is Where the Crawdads Sing. I'll put the picture up here of the book. That book by Dealey Owens um, was so good. It was so good. I really enjoyed that book. It is a historical fiction with a timeline of current timeline as well. And um, it is about a girl, I forget her name, but she lives in the marsh i think in virginia i'm not sure and her parents um abandon her and she raises herself and it's all a character study of her and her life there's a murder mystery as well there's a romance it's so beautiful so written so beautifully and it's just an amazing book and i loved it and i want to watch the movie i still haven't seen it but i Okay, I've tried to re-record this part for the last, like, 10 minutes, and the computer is not working, and I'm so sorry if this isn't matching with my voice. Let's try to get through this. Okay, 
question number seven, a book you have reread the most. For that, I'm going to say the book I have re-listened to the most on audiobook, and that is the Make Lengso series by Donna Andrews. I'll put one of the books up here. This is a book series by Donna Andrews. It is a murder mystery, cozy mystery, and it involves Meg Langslow, who is a, uh, oh, what is she, a blacksmith, and she lives in a small town called Carfilly, and uh, she has a big family that are hilarious, so lots of characters, and um, she solves murders, and I just love Meg Langslow and her family. They are great Meg herself is very laid back and relaxed, doesn't get overwhelmed, and I just love that in her, which it allows for some funny situations, and her family is hilarious, and um, the murder mysteries are always great. I never know the answer until the very end of who did it, and I just, I love that series, and the, the narrator on audiobook is Bernadette Dunn, and she is wonderful at the books. And I just, I love that series. It is so good. If you've tried book one and didn't like it, um, I say to keep going because as you get to know, that book one, it, it introduces a lot of characters. And some people find that off-putting. I enjoyed it myself, but that one's called Murder of Peacocks, I believe. And um, if you didn't enjoy that, then try the next few books because, or the next book, because it is... I, I mean, a wonderful series. I love the audiobooks. I've re-listened to quite a few of them so many times. I've read a few on physical form as well, and I love them. Next, a book from a genre you don't typically read. Um, that one, I don't read anything that I don't typically read. Oh, yes, I do have an answer for that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, I have Heartstopper, volumes 1 to 4, and the reason why I have Heartstopper is because I don't usually read LGBTQIA plus uh, representation forefronted, like, as the main part of a book, um, just because I just don't. I don't. It's not something I gravitate to. I don't read a lot of romance, and when I do read romance, I'm straight, so I, I tend to read straight romance. Um... I read Heartstopper because I, I, I got FOMO. So I read Heartstopper and I absolutely loved it. It is about Nick and Charlie. Charlie is a teenager who has been outed the year before as gay. Um, and he uh, meets an older, a uh, year older boy named Nick. And um, Nick thinks he's straight and then realizes he's bi. And... They start a relationship, and it's just such a cute and wholesome book. It is so good. The whole series, there's four in the graphic novel series, and I believe there's one coming, the fifth one coming out this year, and I enjoyed it. Now, there are some tough topics, especially in the last two books um, that are out, um, book volume three and four, that have eating disorder rep and panic and anxiety and depression. So just to let you know, there are there are those in there, but it's very well represented. Alice Oseman, I'm sorry, Alice Oseman is the author and illustrator, and I loved them. They were so good, it's so cute, and I just, I rooted for their relationship and everything. It was a wonderful series, and um, that's a genre, a subgenre that I don't usually read from. Change the page. Number nine, a book that deserves all the hype it gets. I think for that I'm going to say Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. Um, that book is so cute. It is about, a, it's a fantasy world. It's about an orc who uh, leaves her life as a mercenary and decides to open a coffee shop in a little town. And this little town has never heard of coffee before, and when they learn about it, they love it, and they, they call it bean water, and it's so cute. All these different creatures come, she falls in love with another woman, and it's just, uh, it's just the cutest, cutest book. I loved it. It has, it's very wholesome. It's very, um, it's called a cozy fantasy, um, and that's the subgenre, and it's just the cutest book, and Travis Baldry deserves everything that he's getting. There's a lot of hype of it on on booktube, especially in book talk, and it's just, I love that book. A book you usually recommend when asked to give a rec. For that, I didn't have an answer because I've never actually recommended any books apart from on my YouTube channel. I would say I recommend a lot of cozy mysteries. So again, the Donna Andrews, um, the uh, Lorna Barrett books, um, 
a lot of those, uh, and a lot of middle grade as well, I recommend, but I, I don't really have a go-to recommendation, so I'm just going to skip that question. So, um, number 11, a book that has your favorite character or characters. For that, I'm going to say Murder, She Wrote. I'll put a picture up here of one of the books. And this, this series, I mean, it says it's by Jessica Fletcher, but she is a fictional character. It's really, most of them were written by Donald Bain until he sadly passed away. And uh, now it's written by Terry Farley Mor Moran. And I did have one or two books written by John Stalin as well. Um, but I love this series basically because I love the TV show with Angela Lansbury. Rest in peace, Angela Lansbury. And uh, she was played Jessica Fletcher on the TV show in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. And I love that series. I have watched the whole series over and over again, probably seven or eight times. I love that series. It was on Prime Canada for a while, and I watched, I, it was always on my computer. I loved it. And so I started reading that series a few years ago. It is, it is an, an updated version. It has the same characters, the same town, the same everything, except we have like cell phones and internet and stuff like that now. So it's updated, but it's the same characters, and I love that series. So if you don't know what Murder, She Wrote is, it is about a mystery author, Jessica Fletcher, who is a best-selling author, and she solves crimes. And I love that series. Recommend it totally. The audiobooks are great. It used to have a lady who did um, the audiobook narration. I believe she passed away, but I'm not sure. And she sounded exactly like Angela Ensworth. She was so good. And now we have a different narrator. I don't remember her name, but she's really good too. So recommend those as well. A book you wish you could live in. For that, I'm just going to say Anna Green Gables because I would love to live on PEI. I just, I would love to live there. I've never been there before, but I've seen pictures and videos of it and it's just so beautiful and I would love to live there. And I think I would like to live in the same time period as Anna Green Gables. So, yeah. All right, a book you thought you would hate but ended up loving. I don't know how to answer that because I don't pick up books that I, that I think I'm going to hate. And I don't really hate books. I mean, there's only, I think, two books that I've hard DNF'd in the last, since I started my booktube channel. Um, but I don't pick up books that I think I'm going to hate. So I can't really answer that. No, I can't answer that. Number 14, a book that made you cry. For that, I'm going to say The Woman with the Blue Star. Put the picture up here. That is by Pam Jenoff. And any of Pam Jenoff's books, I loved and I cried every time. I've only read, I mean, I should say, I've only read three of her books. But I love them. I cry every time I read them. Um, I have reread a couple of them as well. And they are just beautiful. So Pam Jenoff writes World War II, mis or not mystery, World War II historical fiction, and um, they are powerful. And the woman with the blue star is about uh, a little girl who is a Jewish girl in a family, and that family goes and lives under the sewers, like in the sewers, during World War II, uh, when the Jews were being killed and taken to prisoner camps. And her family escapes the sewers and lived there for like two years, I think. And she makes friends with a German girl through the, like the rain, those little rain things. I can't remember what they're called, but she looked up and saw a little girl and they became friends through that. And I made it through the whole book without crying until the second from the last chapter. And I just started bawling. It was so beautiful. And the epilogue, it's either the last chapter or the epilogue, got me. And I just started bawling again. It's such a good book. And, um, yeah, Pem Jenoff, in general, makes me cry. Another uh, book author that makes me cry is uh, Ruta Sepetis. I've only read Between Shades of Grey and Salt to the Sea. I do want to read I Must Betray You, and I haven't read that one yet. But the other two that I mentioned, Between Between Shades of Grey and Salt to the Sea, are about Lithuania in World War II. And they are both young adult, and they are just, they made me sob so hard. They were, they were so, 
sad and beautiful at the same time, and I love them. And so those two. Historical fiction in general makes me cry, <laughs> especially World War II books. They make me cry because I just can't believe that we did that fellow human beings did that to other fellow human beings. It's just, it's a horrible, horrible. Okay. And the last book, we made it to the end. The last question is, a book you wish you could read for the first time again. For that, I'm going to say The Blue Castle by L.M. Montgomery. We're going to start with L.M. Montgomery. We're going to end with L.M. Montgomery. So, uh, The Blue Castle is a book by L.M. Montgomery, or Lucy Ma Montgomery. And she, um, this is an adult book um, that is just... <laughs> gorgeous in its writing and I devoured it. I loved it so much. It is about a girl. I can't remember her name. I think it's Vanity was her name. I'm not sure. But she is uh, I think turning 30 and she's not married yet. She lives with this is in the 1800s. She lives with her family who are very strict strict people. You know you do this at a certain time. You wear this. You, you know very strict. And she finds out she's dying. So she decides, well, heck, I'm just going to live my life and have fun because I'm dying anyways. So she goes out and she moves out and does some things that her family disagrees with. And it's just a funny, hilarious story. Beautiful. There's a romance. I loved the romance. It was so good. And the groveling at the end. Top notch. There are no spicy scenes. There um. A, uh, it's, it's just a clean and very good and funny book. And I loved it. The descriptions, again, Ella Montgomery is a genius at descriptions. And it was kind of, again, flowery type writing, but beautifully inaccessible. And I just love it. I love that book so much. I want to reread it. And uh, like I said in the beginning, I, I think I said this in the beginning, I am doing an Ella Montgomery video where I read a bunch of her books so and reread them. So you can look forward to that in the future. Okay, that is the book recommendations take. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give me a like and a thumbs up because that really does help my channel. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. If you feel inclined to, you don't have to, but if you feel inclined to subscribe, I would really appreciate it. Ooh, I'm getting out of breath. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you had a, have a great day. God bless you and all you do. Bye, guys.